When I finished the latest episode of Monday Night Raw and I was getting ready to record ups and downs, I thought to myself, maybe I should just take the intro from last week's show and rerun it, because what's good for world wrestling entertainment is surely good enough for me. And once again, as I always say, how is SmackDown such a wonderful, enjoyable roller coaster ride? And then you tune into Monday nights and you have zero idea what's going to happen. Now, I'll be honest with you, sometimes that's quite fun as well but it also really hurts your brain. But before we do get there, please do head over to the community tab on What Culture Wrestling's YouTube page and vote for this week's Retro Ups and Downs because you have chosen WrestleMania 13. That's a good choice. Unforgiven 2006, which is a bit random. It does have Detroit or Roshan X versus the McMahons in a hell in a cell. The entire Katie Vick saga, which makes me very, very sad. I have a horrible feeling I know what's going to win. Or Judgment Day 2001, and that is a Simon Miller pick because it's literally basically going to be 20 years to the day come this Sunday. So it's always nice to be topical, but I don't think I have a Cat in Hell's chance. However, we'll get to that later in the week. And for now, we take the finger of power and let's up those downs for the latest episode of Raw. At the start of Monday Night Raw, and I'll be honest with you, I don't think that was the intention. Let me just set this scene for you. We saw Adam Pearce, Sonya Deville, and MVP, and as it turned out, they were going to flip a coin to decide who was going to face Bobby Lashley later in the main event. Would it be Drew McIntyre, or would it be Braun Strowman? And I went, why the flub is he facing either of them? We're like a week and a half, or whatever it is, away from WrestleMania Backlash. Why would you want to give that away? At least try and build some sort of suspense. Better still, despite this being in a small room, all of a sudden, Drew McIntyre appeared from one side and Braun Strowman appeared from the other side, meaning they were just stood out of frame and when they wanted to talk, stepped into the camera, which I don't know about you, if that happened in the real world, I'd be like, you guys, you're really weird. Anyway, Strowman called Tails, the coin was in the air, it landed on Tails, so now he's gonna fight Bob later on. And who was this good for? No one. Raw Madness then continued because finally, finally, AJ Styles and Omos were back on Monday nights. And the big question is, where the hell they been? But I mean, thank goodness for that, because there was a small period when I thought they were dead. And hilariously, WWE actually pumped in booze when our tag team champions were making their way to the ring. I'm like, you got to give that up now, WWE. Everybody already loves them. They're just too good. As it does turn out, though, the reason we haven't seen them in a few weeks is because they've been partying down in the Caribbean. And AJ Styles also made a great point. Within five years, he has now become a Grand Slam champion. Do you remember before he ever got in the company, people like AJ Styles would never be successful there? Well, he was a flipping Hall of Famer before he even arrived in the promotion. So now, well, he's an all time. New Day interrupted because it is raw and that's what we do. And then these two teams got into an argument about vests and work ethic. And if anybody else had been doing it, I probably would have taken my nose and just ripped it off for something else to do. But these four are just gold. They made it work. The long and the short of it, though, is that we were going to get a WrestleMania rematch. And I'm sorry, but you cannot let that one fly. Because up to last week, Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston were feuded with Jackson Riker, friends with Captain Picard and Elias. And now all of a sudden, we're just back to this. And again, they tried to justify it by the New Day going, we're 11-time champions and we won our rematch, but also you've been away and that absolutely sucks. But does it make any sense? Could you explain it to anybody else? No, you could not. Is getting a doubt. As ever though, all the talent in WWE are just so consistently good in the ring. So when we did get the New Day versus Omadge, which I'm now calling Omos and AJ Styles, it was very fun. Up. Omos wrecked everyone to begin with, which was nice because it was a good callback to WrestleMania and Kingston's and Xavier Woods could barely get a hug in. And AJ Styles was so happy about this, he high five Omos. And kind of funnily, the referee saw that as a tag, so now AJ Styles had to fight. New Day beat his ass until AJ fell back into the ring corner, so Omos was like, oh, this absolute fool. So he tagged himself back in, and then he continued to absolutely murder people. And yes, maybe he was being a little too overprotective with his opponents, but good grief, he's still brand new. Would you let the man grow? Not literally, he is tall enough. We finish this with a phenomenal forearm off Omos's shoulders once again, which we did at the showcase of the Immortals, which meant our tag team champions retained their belts and they mainly did it because Omos is massive and will absolutely rip out your spleen and send it to your mother. 
because he's got a lot of problems. This is good though. This is good. It's exactly what we should be doing. We just crushed once again an 11 time tag team championship team and they should continue to do this until they probably bump into RK Bro. But even then, I think AJ and Omos should win. But yes, given what I just said and given what we just saw, this division desperately needs more teams. But we've been saying that for about a year. Sonya Deville and Adam Pearce then continued to pretend that they were going to fall out. Because Sonya was talking to Charlotte and Adam Pearce wanted to know what they were talking about. But Sonya Deville's like, it's none of your business. This is what I believe will happen. Sonya Deville will take over Raw Smackdown. Adam Pearce will take on the other show. And you know what? They're both very good in this role. So that will be absolutely fine. We then had a clip that broke the internet. Oh boy. And what am I talking about? Well, we aired a video for the return of none other than Eva Marie, who is coming back to WWE to start the eva Lucian. And I'm sure you can figure out that part. We couldn't tell anything from this because it was just her talking a lot of nonsense while standing on a Ferrari. And that was a little bit strange. But the only thing I do want to address is, yes, some of the reaction this got on social media, Twitter, Facebook, and all that nonsense. Because in short, let's not get mad at a situation where some people got fired and now some other people have got hired. Because one, the rumors have said that Eva Marie was actually hired ages ago and WWE has just waited ages to re-debut her. Number two, it's not her fault. And also number three, it's a company. It's a place of business. No matter who you do get rid of, new people are going to get jobs. Also, you shouldn't want Eva Marie to be fired just because other people got fired. That is absolutely nuts. Let's just see how it plays out. Interview with Bobby Lashley after this, and his plan is to kill Braun Strowman in the main event so he's not able to make it to WrestleMania Backlash, and that is a very good idea. I mean, all he really has to do is go, Braun, there's a gardening convention on the same day, and Braun Strowman won't show up for the pay-per-view because he still looks like he likes gardening. That's the level of my jokes today. I mean, he could have just shouted tomatoes and Braun would be like, oh man, I love tomatoes. <laughs> and speaking of tomatoes, I mean, that was terrible. I can't even make that segue work. But we did cut to Elias and Jackson first Commander Riker. And once again, they had a big box of tomatoes and they were gonna throw them at the New Day to try and get some sort of revenge. Unfortunately, they missed. They hit Randy Orton, who was super pissed off. And if it wasn't for Riddle just flying through the scene at the end of this, and he went, hey, bro, hey, Orton, or whatever the hell he said to Randy, this could have been one of the worst things we would have had on Raw in 2021. But Riddle, he's such a goof, and he makes you laugh in spite of yourself. Well, he basically saved this madness. For some reason, it was then Charlotte Flair versus Dana Brooke, even though I thought Dana and Mandy Rose had beef with Nia Jax. Well, apparently I just made all that up in my head down. There was just nothing. You knew deep down that Charlotte Flair was just gonna wreck Dana Brooke. And in around about four minutes, the queen wrecked Dana Brooke. She applied the figure eight, Dana tapped out. And I sat there and I thought to myself, I don't get what the point of that was. At least we know that Flair is a heel now because she refused to break the hold. But then all of a sudden Mandy Rose was in there and they were trying to get at Charlotte when Sonya Deville came out. And that's when we cut to a break. And I think this was meant to build suspense, like, oh my gosh, what's gonna happen next? But it just left me absolutely baffled. This was doubly true, because then we were told we were gonna have an exclusive interview with Drew McIntyre later. It's like, how are the flubbins can it be exclusive? And then it was triply true, because Sonya Deville and Charlotte Flair were in the ring, but Dana Brooke and Mandy Rose, I can only presume, had fallen into a black hole and now exist in a different universe. Because nobody mentioned where they'd gone. They just weren't there anymore. Do you know what all this was for too? So Charlotte could ask to be put in the Oscar versus Rhea Ripley title match at WrestleMania Backlash. And because she asked really nicely, Sonya Deville went, yes, that sounds great. I mean, come on, even Strowman had to stop tending to his plants in order to win a match to get in that main event. Why couldn't have we even have come up with something like, oh, we're doing Charlotte versus Dana, and if someone does win, that will be a triple threat match too. I mean, that's absolute gubbins, but at least it's something. My point is, don't want to get so angry, it doesn't matter if it's just wrestling, but my point is, can we please stop the whole story thing of, could I have a title match, please? Yes, you could have a title match, please. Give me some kind of story. Right, everyone calm down. <laughs> it's just a bit of fun. But then Ripley barged out, because as always, it is Monday Night Raw, and she said this was a pile of BS, and nobody likes Charlotte Flair, and that was the line of the 
night. And the second line of the night came from Oscar because she also interrupted and she went, Charlotte, you're a big crybaby. I was like, this is so good. We just on the playground. Oscar was then brilliant as always because she was like, you know what? I don't care because I'm going to beat you both anyway. And in that moment, Charlotte attacked Rhea Ripley with a cheap shot. So Oscar attacked Charlotte and then she danced as this segment ended. On a quick side night too, everyone recently has been talking about WWE starting their own women's brand. And I'd be all behind that if it made sense. But before we even get there, let's keep it simpler than that. How about we give more time to the women on Raw and SmackDown and actually allow them to have really cool narratives that get you emotionally invested? I mean, this all felt like we'd just taken a bunch of angles and smushed them together. I want to get to a point when I can watch Monday nights or Friday nights and maybe sometimes all the women's angles take up the majority of the show because they have the best stories and it just makes sense. Much like we do with the men. I mean, oh, what a crazy concept. I mean, no one's going to care about that unless you're truly bonkers. They just need to have more showcase time on the premiere shows as opposed to taking them off the premiere shows and trying to fit them in somewhere else. They're all damn talented. They just need to be given, again, a little bit more time. Right, that's my rant over. Thanks for coming. Sheamus then destroyed Humberto Carrillo. And I love all of this because one, I'm a massive fan of Sheamus, but also two, it's just so nice to see a new face, even though technically it's an old face, back on Raw, because everything else feels exactly the same. Carrillo was getting all fired up too because he thought he was going to get a United States Championship shot later on. <laughs> but then Sheamus stopped that because he interrupted his interview and he honestly, he kicked his ass so bad, I was kind of amazed that we saw Humberto later on. But I love Sheamus in this role. Up. More tension between Adam Pearce and Sonya Deville next because Adam Pearce didn't know that Sonya was going to put Charlotte in the main event. And I'm pretty sure Pearce said that if she carries this on, he's going to have to go to a higher power, which means Vince McMahon and his hood are going to be back soon. It was me, Austin. It was me all along. Anywho, go back to what I said earlier. I'm going to presume that soon they'll be in charge of their respective shows. That's fine. Okay, look, also, please, can we just stop doing Ms. TV every single week, especially in Ms. TV, which follows the exact same pathway as the last Ms. TV? I know it wasn't technically Ms. TV, because it didn't say Ms. TV on the screen, but Ms. and John Morrison came out, and Ms. cut exactly the same promo on Damien Priest that he has been doing now for around about four months. Down. Miz and Morrison are still upset about everything that has happened to them recently. Before Damien Priest came out and said, you guys are a bunch of goobers, why don't you kiss my ass? And my big question is this, why was Damien Priest in a big feud with the Miz and John Morrison at WrestleMania, which he won, only to come out of WrestleMania and still be in a feud with the same people. Shouldn't we have teamed him with Bad Bunny so we could take him to the next level? Apparently not. What do I know? Bald idiot. Had a quick promo with Damo as well where he said that Miz and Morrison would be murdered if they grew up where he grew up. But then it was Damien Priest versus John Morrison. I thought it was pretty good. Up. Of course, Miz was using all his MP to cast distraction all over the place. But this actually screwed up his own friend. Because at one point he was on the apron and back in the ring, Morrison had hit the most devastating move in all of sports entertainment, the surprise roll up and if Miz hadn't have been doing that he may have got the one two three that also made me want to take my face and smash it into a wall because why the hell are we kind of showing visual pinfalls on Damien Priest he should be our super duper next megastar which means he should be getting a pushed to the moon it didn't work out though and John Morrison was so confused about all of this he was still distracted, which meant he got smacked with the hit the lights and Damien Priest finally got the victory. But that also does mean, and the commentators made this very clear, that Priest did indeed win by distraction. Why do we have to do that? This program doesn't need to be extended anymore, but apparently it's never allowed to end. Still, bring it down, that is 52 distractions in 2021. And given we're only documenting this for Raw and SmackDown, we are essentially on 13 a month. There's also been around about 32 shows since the start of the year, meaning on average, we get 1.6 distraction finishes per episode of Raw and SmackDown. I'm sorry, I think personally that is way too much. Mansoor then signed a contract to appear on WWE Raw, and I was so excited. I mean, if you had seen it at the time, I had a smile like the Cheshire Cat, because of course, if you have been following Mansoor's career, he is on a 50 plus match winning streak, and I was like, well, what a great story to introduce him with. Did anybody mention this at any time during the show? The answer is no. It was kind of funny, because when Mansoor was doing this, Sheamus stormed in, 
and he thought Mansoor was just Adam Pearce's new intern. And again, Sheamus did this very well. And it also means they're gonna have a match later on. But I was so concerned, I was like sweating. That's what I spent from this moment until I saw Mansoor back in the ring. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna lose his losing streak. They kind of did, but they kind of didn't. We'll talk about it. MVP was then being interviewed for the second time, and he said exactly the same stuff he'd already said at the start of Raw. And I was so taken aback by this, I thought I'd sat on my controller and rewound the show on my DVR. Why did he need to do it again? And MVP is brilliant. He is one of the best things you'll get on Monday nights, but truly, truly confusing down. And speaking of downs, it was then the Lucha House Party versus Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin. Now the match was fine, even though it got no time, even though we just cut to it mid-flow after we cut back from a commercial break or anything. And essentially, this was a battle to see who is lowest on the WWE totem pole. Because both have been through pointless breakups with no real fallout from it. And yes, it ended when Grandmother Metalik hit a springboard elbow from the top and pin Shelton Benjamin, so now we know. I still have no idea why he broke up the Hurt Business, but then we went and broke up Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin. Now, fair play to Cedric. He got on the microphone and he spat fire at Benjamin, saying he's a waste of time, he's a waste of space, he's holding him back. And this was a really good promo, but if you're like me, you just have all the fear. They're probably gonna have a match on main event, or they're probably gonna have a match during the pre-show of WrestleMania Backlash, and then we may never see them again. I don't want that. I would love this to become an excellent feud that has me going left and right and up and down, obviously, but I don't believe it. So that's where I've arrived with my WWE programming. But I mean that to such a degree, if I actually thought this was gonna go somewhere, I would have given it an up, but I'm not because again, I have no trust, so it's getting that down. Drew Gulak and Angel Garza then worked themselves into a match because Drew Gulak thought Angel Garza was a crappy ladies man. So Angel Garza said, okay, well, I'm gonna get my revenge by taking this rose and sticking it up your ass. Drew Gulak responded to this by looking at him like he was an alien, and I would have responded the same way. Why are you going to stick a flower up somebody's rectum, especially when Braun Strowman is around? He won't like the fact you're taking the mick out of gardening. So this was ridiculous in many ways, but I was so happy when we did get it because it was new and it was fresh. And I do believe we're actually trying for a third time with Angel Garza, which we should do. He's really good. I'm giving it up. Now, it didn't go more than two minutes. It was all one-sided when Angel did win after the wing clipper. But he certainly is a man of his word because when he was done, he took the rose and he stuck it up his ass. No, wait, not his ass. He stuck it up Drew Gulak's ass. But now when your friends or family, whoever the hell you talk to about wrestling say, hey, what happened on Raw? You're allowed to go while a man took a flower and he pushed it up somebody's bum. And when it was up there, he kicked him right in the ass as well. So let's just move on because I have said the word ass too much. Before all that too, we had a video wishing The Rock a happy birthday, because it was his birthday recently. Imagine it wasn't, that would have been a very strange thing to do. And we had an interview with Shelton Benjamin, which was also very well delivered, but it wasn't able to get me over my fears. But yeah, he was also spitting fire and saying, hey, I've survived all this long, and Cedric Alexander is nothing but a young punk. And if WWE can't see how invested these two guys are and do something with this, well, I'm not gonna do anything. I'll just give it a down in a few weeks. What else am I able to do? I'm just really hoping for the opposite. RK Bro then continued to be the best thing on Raw. Up. Riddle was goofing around with the Viking Raiders, which Randy Orton didn't like at all because he wants Riddle to get serious. And when Riddle did get kind of serious, he was like, oh man, don't worry about it. We're undefeated. And Randy could not handle that at all because of course they've only had one match these two are brilliant together. As he did get hit by a tomato earlier, there's another one of those WWE sentences, Randy Orton said they should have another match, and it was against Elias and Jackson Riker, and of course, they're nothing, so RK Bro ran through them. We essentially got the same finish from last week, but that was absolutely fine. So they now 2-0, and I don't get how this works as well as it does. Let's just hope this lasts for a long while and literally doesn't get changed because we need a singles match for a pay-per-view, because it has legs like Stacey Keebler. We got our exclusive interview with Drew McIntyre next, and you will be surprised to hear it was just a promo in the back, like he's done, oh, I don't know, around about 8,000 times this year. He also referenced T-Bar and Mace, who were not on the show, you tell me, and said, why have they got rid of the masks, but they've still got their dumb names? And it's a really good question, Drew. 
I have an answer. Soon, of course, he was interrupted by Braun Strowman, who went, oh, I'm going to win a WrestleMania backlash, and then I'm going to go turn my soil. And hilariously, Drew went, why don't you leave? So Braun went, okay. And he left. I don't know what's going on anymore. WWE was then walking on a very fine tightrope. And what they did is much like Kano from Mortal Kombat, they took their hand, they reached into their chest, they pulled out my heart, and they spat on it, and they crushed my dreams. Let me explain. Because given what happened earlier, it was Sheamus versus Mansoor, and I also think this was announced as a non-title match, so I was like, great, it means Mansoor can win, and then eventually somebody can go, hey ho, he's got a winning streak. But instead, we took that winning streak and we buried it in the ground. And why? Because around about eight minutes in, Humberto Carrillo remembered, oh, I don't like Sheamus. And oh, look, he's in the ring. So he attacked the Irish curse, which caused a disqualification. And because Humberto beat up the United States champion, it means Sheamus won and Mansoor lost. So 52 wins or whatever the hell it was. And we just got rid of it without a whimper and we did it using a DQ. It didn't even matter because it ended with Sheamus bro kicking everyone, which I was fine with because I really like Sheamus as long as it builds to something. But honestly, why did we have to do this? What was the point of giving Mansoor all of those wins? You may as well have just had him vanish from television like everybody else. So I am intrigued because I like the fact that we are involving people like Mansoor and Humberto Korea with Sheamus. But there's nothing else I can do here apart from bring down the counter. It rolls up to 25 and I'm also giving it a down. Another Alexa's playground was next with Alexa Bliss and Lily. And also we had zero sightings of Bray Wyatt on this show. So that's another guy that has just absolutely disappeared. And as you already know, this stuff just isn't for me. Still, Bliss has picked her target or at least Lily has, although we didn't find out who that's going to be on this evening's show. But we did get a lullaby. And it ended with something like, oh, Lily, you're the best. Uh. The idea is that Alexa Bliss isn't in control, though. And can you imagine if we actually do build to Alexa Bliss versus Charlotte Flair and Charlotte Flair loses because black ghoul starts coming out of her forehead? <laughs> you may be chuckling away, but I think that has to happen. I still appreciate the dedication to the cause with this. because If you do go back through Bliss's transformation, it has lasted a long time and WWE has been committed to it. But this is just one of those situations where on my three hour wrestling program, there's always going to be something that doesn't click with me. And this one just doesn't click with me. But if you love it, I imagine you're having the time of your life. Good for you. And then why did we even bother? This little wry grin attacking me even though I don't want it to. Because even though they promoted it all week long, we had Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax teaming up to defend their championships against Lana and Naomi. And it went, let me just check the fake watch, 122 seconds. And sure, Lana had the match won, but do you know why nothing happened? Because Reginald <laughs> caused the distraction on the outside, so the referee didn't see it. Shayna Baszler applied the Kira Fuda clutch. Lana tapped out, so we are in the exact same position we were. No word of a lie of November 2020, because nothing in the women's division is ever allowed to move forward. You also have to bring down the distraction board because this was absolutely a distraction and it goes up to 54. And once again, I want to refer to my rant from earlier. Please, for the love of everything WWE, would you allow the women to not only have some more time, but also introduce some new people into the tag team scene? Down. Main event time and Bobby Lashley just beat Braun Strowman, which begs the question, why is Braun Strowman still in that triple threat match? This doesn't happen in any other sport. However, I will say, much like last week, this was just big dude beats the crap out of the other big dude. And I can always get behind that. Up. Drew McIntyre was out quicker than you could say, well, there's going to be a distraction which of course meant there was a distraction. Now, Drew did commentary for a lot of this, including at one point where Byron Saxon went, hey, Drew, why don't we talk about that time you did promo class with Vince McMahon? I was like, I give in, I give in. Why am I trying to make sense of any of this? And when Braun Strowman went, raw and went to charge at Bobby Lashley on the outside, he missed, he hit Drew. Those two got into it, which of course is where the distraction occurred. Braun Strowman was absolutely like, oh, I can't believe it. He got speared, one, two, three, Bobby Lashley won. So that was done and dusted, and I just want to say monster among men my ass do you ever see king kong or godzilla get distracted 
Exactly. Drew hit a bunch of Claymore kicks so he could be standing tall. And then from nowhere, we just had an announcement, oh, next week we're gonna do Drew McIntyre versus Bobby Lashley. So what was the point of a coin flip earlier on, but I don't wanna get into that. And of course, it's a distraction, bring down the board. I realize I just made a mistake. Now it's up to 54, but how the hell could you blame me? There is so many distractions. I regret even taking on this task to begin with. But yes, we are at 54. We had three on one flipping show. And because of that and everything else, it's got to get it down. Which brings us to the end of another Raw, and I don't even know what to tell you anymore. Certain aspects of this were much better than they have been in the last couple of weeks, but other aspects were literally <laughs> the same. It was the same story, and it was the same setup. So I do enjoy it, but I enjoy it in like a bad way, and I don't even know what that means, but it's getting it down. Now please do leave a comment below and let us know what you thought about last night's episode of Raw. Like the video, share the video and subscribe. Head over to whatculture.com where you can read an article called Ups and Downs and get other opinions, they're not mine. Make sure you give us a follow on social media and go and click other videos here on the channel, some of them around my head right now, so you can watch more content. My name is Simon for What Culture. Thank you for joining me as always. And if you only watch Raw Ups and Downs, I'll see you in a week's time. And I have no idea where the hell we're going to be, but we will be going home for WrestleMania Backlash.